Are we live? Are we live? Are we? This is. Oh, yes. so this is really happening right now? No, no, we're not. Oh, we're not live? No. Okay. I'm Ooh. playing again. It's all good. Cool. That's yeah, good. It's all good. Oh, man. It's great. What's up, Abilene? <laughs> that was very aggressive. That was, <laughs> that very, was very aggressive. What's up, Abilene? Abilene? It's your boy, JB. Come on, walk behind and show everybody. <laughs> you got to hold it up. Hang on, I'm trying to share this. We got anybody out here? Not yet. Nobody's uh -uh. on here yet? Uh-uh. I'm not that tall. Midweek meal. Nice. There it is. Y'all stand there the whole Higher. time. Higher. 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 I think that's going to be perfect. Man. Yeah, that's good. Y'all yeah, just stand there. Don't move. Yeah. Aaron, don't give up. No, don't give there up. you go. There we go. There we perfect. go. Good perfect. job, Aaron. Perfect. Just stay right there. Don't move. The whole no, time. Please. Hey, I need you to be quiet. You can't hear on top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need you to hold it down back right, there, buddy. All right, All right get out of here. Yeah. Golly. So, so we, we got a banner. Yes. In case anybody wanted to know. Next shirt. Yes. <laughs> Kelly said she loves it. Yes. Nice. Nice. I've got to share this thing. I'm sharing it too. Hold on. Here we go. Three, two, one. Uh, share. Right post. Post. Did I beat you? Boom. Well, so I clicked on the live stream and we can't show off that. Yeah, no, you can't. So. You're right. Yeah. So I had to go back and share it. So go ahead, guys. Click yeah. share real quick. Go ahead and share it to your Can page. You? That way we can show it to show it to our friends. Hopefully, pour some life into them. So we've got Jody and James and Kelly are watching. Hey. Nice. Nice. Good morning, Julio. Good morning, Julio. Did you, say, did you just get up, Julio? <laughs> Julio, go back to bed, bro. You're good. <laughs> You're good, bro. Let's try this tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> So, man, I am so glad that you guys made the decision to join us on this Wednesday evening yes. or Thursday morning or whenever you're watching. Yes. Uh, we just want you to know, man, we are glad you guys are here. Yeah. So you were born on purpose. For purpose. Yeah. Show them the back of your sweater. Can you do last that? Week. Did you? Did he show the back of the sweater? Yeah, last week. So we got new swag in. Uh, last week, I wore, wore the green shirt that we have and... We got the hoodie that says Born on Purpose for a Purpose uh, right here. And uh, we got lots of different sizes. What's up, Bob? Good to see you, Bob sir. Hey, Bob. Bob the Encourager. What's up, Bob? So uh, we're excited. Like, like Topeka Bob? Topeka Bob. Topeka Bob. Topeka Bob? Oh, that's it. Topeka Bob. That is. He has a nickname. Yes. Topeka we got Bob. Topeka Bob, Julio. Yes. Kelly. All the yes. folks. Yes. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, McKenna. <laughs> Sorry, she does the. Yeah, that's. That's okay. Julio's, yeah, it. I don't know. It's, it's cool. It was yeah. autocorrect, right, Julio? Yeah. Autocorrect gets yeah, you. Yeah, you meant to say. Good evening and good night. Good, good something. I don't good know day, sir. Have a good day. Good day. So. Yes. I'm excited. What's up? Man, we got a, a lot of cool things uh, that are happening in this month, starting with. This Saturday, uh, from 10 to 2, we got the Parents' Day out. We do. So but before that, on Thursday, Thursday, from 6 to 8, we have our next steps. Oh, yeah. Next step. Uh -huh. You were right. You had no clue. No, I forgot. That, that, yeah. that look of confusion. Yeah. It was confusion yes. at first, but next steps is so going to be tomorrow night. from yes. 6 to 8. Yes. We had nine people go through. Sunday. That's awesome. Yep. Awesome, awesome. So, so they have so many people that I have signed up to games. be a part of the serve team. Uh, so we're just excited uh, about the opportunity for people to serve and all that good good yes. stuff. So yes, it's yes, been yes. great. So Thursday we have that from 6 to 8. Then on Saturday from 10 to 2, Saturday. we've got Parents' Day Out. Yes. So it's an opportunity. Get your Christmas shopping done. Get away from the kids. Get away from your children. So like I'm going to go have coffee. Yeah. I'm not even shopping. I'm just, just going to have coffee. Yeah, gonna have coffee. Uh, I am not. But that's okay. Uh, I might actually. Let's do you coffee. 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 Yeah. What? Well, are you coffee. off there? Uh, no. Oh, okay. This is a thing you do in the in the car business, so you know <laughs> when you're off and someone asks you, you always say no. <laughs> because if you say yes, oh. everyone who's asked you to do something on a Saturday that you said, man, I work. <laughs> they they all call you. <laughs> like, hey. That's awesome. And the next thing you know, that's your Saturday awesome. is not yeah, off. It's uh, gone. 
Hey, so, Ashley. Yes, yes so sorry to hear about yes. your grandfather. So we're praying for you. Absolutely. Uh, big time. Uh, Absolutely. You're a rock star, and we missed you. Missed you, missed you, because yes. you, you are awesome. So, yes. Pastor Adam, you did a great job Sunday morning. It was my yep. favorite was it? that you have done on the Fruits wow. of the Spirit. So I'm just going to read one thing that I think okay. hit everybody. Yeah. And then we have some other stuff we want to talk about yeah, because talk about we've got something really cool that's mm-hmm. coming up. And you don't have it on the notes here. But this yeah. was the coolest scripture. And lots of people have posted about this. And lots of people have, have said it. So here we go. Proverbs 15, verse 1. A soft answer turns, or a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. There have been a lot of Ooh. people posted about that. Ooh! Yeah. That was, that was. Come on. Like, I didn't ooh. even think I'd ever read Proverbs before. Uh. <laughs> I was like, ooh, that, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, but that uh. scripture yeah. wrapped up perfectly your, your message that you had yes. on gentleness. And a gentle answer turns away wrath, but harsh a harsh word stirs up anger. Uh, it was so good. Man, I started sending that to people I worked with, uh, yeah. different managers and stuff. It's a reminder to all of us uh, about the gentle word. And it reminds me of Proverbs 18, 21, which says the power of life and death is in your tongue. Come on. And so in that gentle part of what you're speaking and what you're talking about and doing, Man, it just, uh, I, I, it got me. Well, and that falls under, you know, that falls under our one that was like our gentleness, you know, uh, should be towards everybody. Yes, 100%. You know, we, shouldn't, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't have favorites, if you will, you know what I mean? We shouldn't just be going out and be like, hey, I'm, I'm going to treat you okay, but I'm not going to treat yeah. this person okay. It should go to everybody. Yes, yeah. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. So, nice you just saw me do this weird thing. Uh, I'll prom- I promise never to cheer again. <coughs> yes. Anyways, go it, it's team. team. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It's you know what I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad you were on the football field, not on the sidelines. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. Don't see me on that. So and plus you had a lot to live up to because your girlfriend is a professional clogger in high school. Uh, she was a professional clogger. So there's a lot to live up to. Yes. I mean, you never got asked to go to Dolly World. <laughs> so, anyways, enough of that. Uh, really excited for everything that God's doing. <laughs> And so that leads us into, just wanted to talk about that briefly yeah, uh, on Sunday. Absolutely. If you haven't had an opportunity to listen to the sermon or <laughs> message on uh, gentleness, go to the uh, Facebook page, you can watch it there, or go to our YouTube channel, uh, which is Connect Church of Abilene. Really hard to remember uh, on YouTube, and, and re-watch that again, because you did a really yeah. good job. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so that leads us to the next thing. What's the next thing? We have, it's this Sunday, correct, or next Sunday, the offering? This Sunday, yes, right. this Sunday. So this Sunday, and this is kind of going to lead into some different stuff. Uh, kind of, I think we're going to talk about the different offering and tithe and different stuff like that. We'll talk about a little bit about that. I, I've so, got a, so what JB's talking about is we, we've got our Christmas offering that we do every year. Um, we take up an offering, and so we can give um, to all of the parents out there that are going to have problems with buying Christmas presents. And we have had testimony after testimony of, He's like, can somebody bring me? Can somebody bring my lime drink? Thank you. What is that? Key grip. Key grip. grip. Where's my key grip? Where's the key grip? Did I know? So, so we're gonna be taking up our offering on. Sorry. Money out. You gonna pay when they deliver? So, uh, (laughs) we're we're gonna take up our offering on Sunday, Um, and it's open right now. The Christmas fund. If you would like to give to that, um, you go to our. You give through Venmo at Connect Church of Abilene. Uh, you go to our website, give through that. You'll also have a drop down box that will show that you can give towards the Christmas fund. Um, you can just bring it in Sunday. Um, so excited about that because there's a lot of people that were able to help during the Christmas time, especially yeah. right now. I'm only honest, there's a lot of people because of COVID. Mm. Uh, you know, Christmas may not be possible this year. And I know there's a lot of people that are blessed. Um, they're going to be able to give into this offering uh, to help the ones that are struggling at this time. So, you know, um, that's something I just want to. Something I just wanted to share, something I had on my heart was, I just want to give you just a quick testimony about, you know, because Fair and I, so we've been tithing, um, golly, we've been married, come on now. In 25 years. 25 years on December 16th. Um, and so we started learning about tithing probably about year two of our marriage um, and about giving. And, you know, that is just a practice that Fair and I have done through the years. And so... Um, one thing that I wanted to share. <laughs> His arms are too short. 
My wife put water out a little bit too it's far. Okay. Thank you, Key Grip. Thank you very much, baby. I love you. So, uh, one thing that I wanted to share uh, was that just, you know, actually just these last couple of days. So, um, a lot of you guys know, probably all of you guys know that that um, own a cabinet shop. Uh, my son and I are partners on the cabinet shop. He wanted to go into business. Uh, and actually, I'm getting ready to step away from it and do church full time. You know, God's really put that on my heart. And so, we've we've taken the right steps that we need to take uh, financially to do that. And so, the one thing that I wanted to to just share with you guys is that so so we've had this shop that we've been in that was kind of a small shop it was uh, it was about uh, 1600 square feet um, and we we've, we've done the best we could in this small shop here in Abilene and you know and I, I'm going to contribute what God did and how God did to this because we're tithers um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how else to put it you know God God told me years ago he said that tithing is a key that unlocks a door that otherwise wouldn't be unlocked and behind that door is blessing um, and when you go to Malachi and you read Malachi 3, it talks about tithing. It talks about giving unto the church. Um, and so, you know, so what we had happen these last couple of days is Bailey and I have actually been moving shops. Um, and what we pay for the, sh for the shop that we have now um, is just about 50% more than what we were paying. Um, but the shop is about... Um, Eight times bigger. Wow, that's crazy. Um, than, than the shop. And I've been and in your old shop. Yeah, and you needed small. some more space. Yeah, we could we couldn't really do anything. We couldn't, you know, we, we didn't have the equipment that we could fit it in there to, to where we could build our own doors. We like building everything um, that we can. We had to order the doors just because we couldn't we didn't have the room to do yeah. it anymore. So so the shop that we have now that we we're able to move into for only fifty percent more of what we were paying, uh, it's about eight times as big uh, than what we had, and, and I contribute that one hundred percent. To God and to giving and to being a tither, um, and just had on my heart to share that. And I know a lot of people, you know, um, you know, tithing is a, a subject that a lot of pastors won't talk about. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I'll talk about it because that's the only way that Fran and I got out of poverty. That's the only way we. And I'm gonna be honest, we were probably under poverty. We were probably below the line, uh, just about as far as you could get. Um, we couldn't, um, by any means. Um, have even eaten for a year and a half if we didn't live by my parents Yeah. Um, at the time because we just didn't have the funds. Well, and you've talked about like Bailey and the Christmas presents oh, or lack thereof. Absolutely. Uh, right. For a period of time in his life. Yeah, about the first three years. You know, I don't even know that he got a birthday gift yeah. that was very big at all or Christmas presents um, uh, just because we didn't financially, we couldn't do yeah. that. And so, you know, it's just one of those things I just want to encourage everybody because I've been there. Um, and when I found out about tithing, I actually got upset at my church that I was going to at that time that I grew up in because they didn't teach us. Yeah. Uh, there was a principle in God's word that if we applied that principle, there was, um, uh, I'll just call it a reward, if you will, um, that God said he would do. There's, there's things that he said he would do if we would do certain things on tithing. And so once I found out about it, I was a little upset at the church I grew up in because they didn't teach about tithing. Yeah. I didn't know anything about it. Um, and we started doing it, and it brought us from um, below the poverty line going to be 100% honest, you know, um, I made $8 an hour framing houses. No um, overtime. And no overtime, and prayer didn't work at all, and so that was our income, that's all we had. And so, um, you know, it was just one of those things that, that through tithing, and I don't even know how we, we were able to give, you know, there were times that I don't even know where the money came from, I don't know how we ended up being able to pay bills at the end of the month, um, to now, you know, having a business that, and, 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 you know, being able to be blessed with a new building that doesn't cost hardly anything above what we were already doing, um, yet it's an amazing building that yeah. we're able to do a lot of different things in. Because I've got some other things on my heart um, besides cabinets. Uh, Bailey's kind of taking that over. I've got some other things. Because I love woodworking. I'm not yeah. going to get out of woodworking. Um, it's something that God's put inside of me, and it's a gift I have, and I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna. there's some other, other things that I'm going to do um, besides that. Um, because I, you know, everybody's got their thing that they do, and that's mine. So yeah. I just wanted to share that. No, and that's, you know, I can relate to that in a, in a lot of different ways you know up until i started going to connect church of abilene i would call myself a god tipper mm -hmm. uh you know what i mean if it was a good sermon i may slide a 20 in the in the yeah. bucket you know or if they give me a sob story about a you know kid starving in the sudan i may put a little money in the bucket uh, but the scripture that stood out to me was in corinthians uh, where it talks about giving and it said don't give pray about what you should give don't give more don't give less give exactly basically what god tells yeah. you to and there is a dollar amount that um, 
my family gives. Um, and I won't, I will be transparently honest. It is not always easy. Um, if that makes sense financially in the, in the world's eyes, it wouldn't be an easy thing or whatever, but I can remember, uh, February of last year, I can remember it was the worst month that I had ever had, uh, the worst month in the car business, low, smallest check I'd ever gotten. And I was praying and I was like, well, you know what? I'll scale back what I'm giving and make it exactly this amount, you know, and, and just started working through it. And I really did, you know, feel the spirit of the Lord tell me, you know, trust me. Give exactly what I've told you to give. I got this. And I did. And I'm not going to say magic money showed up in my bank account. But I'm going to say the toilet paper roll probably lasted a little bit longer. Uh, you know, food yeah. went longer. Uh, yeah. Electricity was less expensive. Water, whatever it was, you yeah. know, God did take care of me. Absolutely. And then that March was the best month I ever had in the car business and the largest paycheck I had ever gotten in the car business. And I attribute that not to anything I did other than was faithful with what God had told me right. and Absolutely. what God had showed me. And at the end of the year, it ended up being, you know, uh, we were able to give consistently and have been able to consistently do that and be a blessing, not to ourselves, but to God and use and use the church as an avenue to help meet the needs of, of people in this area. You know, I don't get a paycheck for <laughs> what I do. Uh, you know, there's so many yeah. people that just serve and, and do those things. And it's not out of anything else than wanting to see people come to know Christ. And, uh, and Absolutely. through that, it takes funds. I mean, it just does. And it I know does. that's not what you're talking about, no, but it does. No, you're talking about does. the blessings that God has. And, and I a hundred percent see advantage of not being the pastor. Uh, I could say that, you know, and there's so many great things that I, I don't know how else to say it, yeah. that God does. Um, and man, he uses us as an avenue to be able to do that and to be able to give of our time, give of our finances, our resources, uh, give food, Absolutely. give different things, and that's well, because he, you know, and that's that's his, you know, when Farron and I started giving way back when God started teaching us about this, there was a there was a dollar amount, it was fifty eight dollars a month, mm -hmm. um, is is what he would ask us to start giving. Um, you know, he knows your finances, he knows where you're at, he knows what bills are coming up, and this is the thing that I this is the thing that I will encourage people: don't ever give um, out of emotion. Come on, because Farron and I have given out of emotion. We didn't ask God, like like you said, somebody said, hey, your kids need fed, uh, you know, after three, well, we take all the money, you know what 100%. I mean? And then it's like, we couldn't pay a bill, you know? And I had to go back there and check myself, like, did I really ask God or did I give out of emotion? Yeah. So when I have people that come up to me and, and they're, they're trying to, to, to ask me to give, and that's something we don't do at Connect Church. We don't, I don't want you to give out of emotion. I want you to give out of what God tells you to give 100%. because that's where your blessing lies. Yeah. And so, you know, we would give out of emotion. And I remember uh, several, several times, that we gave out of emotion um, and you know we ended up you know struggling a little bit for yeah. a few months because we shouldn't have given out of emotion mm -hmm. um, you know we want you to give out of obedience to what God tells you to 100%. give and so you know when people ask me and, and I, this this maybe this will help somebody but when people come up and say hey I, you know this or this or this um, and, and if it's above what I have you know what I mean or above uh, a need that maybe I can't I could meet but how would I be um, and it's and it's out of emotion. I always wait. I wait three days. Yeah. And if somebody says, "Well, you know, if you don't give right now, then you won't be okay," then I don't. I don't give. You know, 100%. If, if you're going to pressure me into it, then no, I'm not supposed to give. Yeah. Um, so I always wait three days. Um, and if I still have that inside of my heart, if God hasn't like let that wash away, then I go ahead and give that amount. Yeah. Um, so you know that's why we mentioned last, and we'll mention it tonight about our Christmas offering, Big time. Um, because we would love to be able to bless it. And a hundred percent of what comes in the Christmas offering goes out plus directly to. Um, you know, I think last year um, everything that came in, I think we even gave like a thousand dollars above um, because we had that many needs yeah. of people that, that that had that. So yeah, we yeah. just wanted to make sure um, that we're able to do that for everybody. And we've already had some people come up and ask because we ask people, hey, if you are struggling. If we're not, because we may not know, let us know, yeah. you know, and we'll do what we can. Um, but yeah, so it's just one of those things, you know, so I'm just going to tell you. I'll tell you, you a funny story. Yeah. It's not your story. A minute, I thought it was your story when you were talking about <laughs> yeah. it. There's this pastor named Jeremy Foster, uh, and he is hilarious. And I was listening to him one time, and he gets real awkward when he, like, we're having the conversation we're having now. You could tell it's awkward for yeah. him. And so he was telling this story about he was at this church rally and they were doing a giving push and he had just paid off his truck 
and he was so excited that his truck was paid off and the pastor's doing one of the, one of those <laughs> giveth now yeah, kind of conversations, yeah, you know? Yeah. And he's like, I just got so excited and all of my emotions. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to give my truck. And he said, I had the title out in my car and I went and grabbed the title, grabbed the keys, ran up and gave the truck. <laughs> and he said, then when it was over, I was expecting this great miracle to happen, like a Rolls Royce was going to pull up, <laughs> yeah. and I was just going to jump in it. And he said, and I realized I didn't have a car to go home in. And he had given away his car that he came in, and it was out of that emotion side of things. It yeah. wasn't that God told him to. It was that he yeah. was guilted slash emotionally moved into it, man. And God doesn't want that. It's like Trey says about giving out of a being a generous giver. Absolutely. you know. And I think that's one thing that people don't realize is this is not a – connect church thing man i've had more i've got a friend of mine who is as as baptist as baptist come man and he tells the great story his name's lawson he's on here a lot of times about his house and they he was having a bible study for college kids and his house was getting too small and he said you know, he told his wife i'm going to put a for sale sign out in the front yard and she's like why and nobody came by and then out of nowhere this biker dude comes up and ends up being able to pay cash for the house they were able to use it as down payment to get a bigger house to minister to more kids. And it was just awesome to yeah. hear. And he said, I contribute what I have in life and everything that I have to the fact that God has told me X amount to give and different things. And I give yeah. exactly what he tells me. And it's not yeah. like some magic secret, yeah. man. This is, a, this is a principle of God that just it applies to all of our lives. And I can tell you this, man. I don't give to get. I give because God's given me the resources to give and as you know i don't well, know it's weird it says over i love it scripture that you're talking about you know it says give with a cheerful heart don't give grudgingly or no. a necessity i mean you don't just give because you know and then, and then it's like oh they're asking you to give and you're like uh -huh. oh, i don't want to give it well don't give it yeah 100 yeah. keep it keep it it's you know better we don't need for it. you you know the church doesn't need it at that time yeah um but you know that's i just wanted to i just want to talk about that yeah because, you know good stuff the man. building that we we move into i contributed all to god Yes, um, I contributed everything, and it's going to allow us to do more with the business. Uh, it's going to allow us to grow it. I say awesome. us, it's going to allow Bayer to grow that side, and then allow me to kind of do what I want to do on the side. Yeah, um, I'm excited so, for you, man. I am too. I it's am a too. big it's deal. Weird. That's cool. It's and I know what you want to do, and I'm excited about yes. that. I'll be your <laughs> guinea pig. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be your guinea pig. I'll do it. So, uh, so man, that's exciting. I'm, I'm just, I'm over the moon for 2020 okay. if that makes any sense man i'm just so excited for everything that god's done through 2020 it has been a hard year but it has been a great year man yeah. so many people coming to know jesus so many new faces at church so many old faces coming back it's just been so good to see what god's done through 2020 and man it, i just love love the fact that he is so faithful you know on sunday i mean we had six people come you on know, got saved or come got on day. I need some hand claps out there. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to throw some, throw some, throw some, some, thumbs, up. some thumbs, thumbs up. Some thumbs up. There. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> deal. So, you know, that's what it's about. You know, everything we do is about populating heaven. 100%. Um, and so, you know, and it comes, and a lot of times it'll come down to resources. Yeah. Big you know, the Bible is very clear that, you know, if someone comes to you with a need um, and you have the means to meet that need, that you should. Yeah. Um, and we want the means. And, and it also says, you know, should you. Uh, should you try to meet somebody's spiritual need without meeting their, their Come physical on. need? You know, it says no. Nah. You know, it says a lot of times when you meet that physical need of people, yeah, um, then the spiritual need comes. Well, up. and you even and said so. that Sunday about uh, our lives. A lot of times are the only Bible that somebody yes, will see. Absolutely. Um, and when you said that, it was that 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 reminded me of being there in the giving side of for people, man. Just yeah. doing the doing the stuff for people, and it's like the guy that paid off the church debt. And Amen. different stuff like that. I mean, Amen. God is so stinking faithful. Well, and that's something, you know, that's something we hadn't talked about in a long time. You know, at our one year anniversary, we're, we're just a little over two years old, but at our one year anniversary, um, right before it, right before we had our anniversary, I think it was a week before. A week, yeah. Um, I was having a, a meeting with a guy just sitting down talking to a friend of mine, was sitting down talking, and he looked at me and said, God just told me to pay the debt off of the church. And so he paid the debt off. Um, of the church, and so we're a debt free church, so everything that comes in, we're able to come on. We're able to get, so. that's, well, that's my new thing. That's uh, what, okay. Yeah, it's my new thing. <laughs> it's my new one. So, we've come yeah. to a uh, very important part, the, but before, probably most people are waiting for before, because I know you'll tune out afterwards, <laughs> I'm going to do a selfless promotion. 
Uh, Trey McDuffie was on here, and the city of Breckenridge mm -hmm. and his church, New Destination Church, have asked me, Amen. what, me, uh, to yes. lead a youth rally at Bailey Auditorium, which is at the school, uh, and it's going to be full of young people and Amen. some not-so-young people, uh, and <laughs> I'm going to have the opportunity to uh, give a life-giving message. So excited, man. I know that there's so many kids awesome. in that oh, town that are going to come, come to know Jesus. Not because of me, but because he is that awesome. All yeah. I do is stand up there. He does all the work. Come so on. that's exciting. It's from 7 to 9 this Saturday. Hey, and our youth pastor. Our youth pastor, Junior. Boom, gonna boom, lay it down, boom, man. I'm going to do some rap. rap, rap, rap. Uh, and then a group from Abilene. And I never can remember, and I apologize. Julio, if you remember what the name of the group that Hobby has, uh, they're going to be leading worship. Uh, yes. And they're going to be doing a great job. Got a big sound system. Uh, it's just going to be a fun time. Uh, for these kids and I just be praying about it that you know some folks some kiddos come to know Christ their Amen. lives are changed and they will never be the same Amen. so we come to the most important part which is not me giving uh, self promotion but it's not really I want God to do some great stuff Amen. for uh, big deal so yes. thank you Trey and New Destination yes. Church for that opportunity Christie's <laughs> Comedy <laughs> Corner <laughs> Christie's Comedy Corner hey okay Every morning, <laughs> I tell my family I'm going to go out jogging, but then I don't. It's a running joke. <laughs> nice. I like it. Solid six. Okay, wait, I got another one. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> there was once upon a time, there was a king who was only 12 inches tall. He was a terrible king, mm -hmm. but he made a great ruler. Oh, that's an I eight. Like that that's one. an eight. I actually like that one. That's I, an I eight. Give you a good seven and a half on that that's one. an eight. That Aaron, was good. And actually, for me, that's really good. Can, so. can you have a special guest, yes. Christy? Aaron? Aaron, come here. Come here, buddy. Because you got one, too. You got I the got good one. Apprentice. You got an apprentice. <laughs> come on, buddy. Come on up I, here. I think you're as tall as Christy. You can, you can stand back. Come on. This is a good one. Oh, oh no, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come right here. Come, come right here. All right. All right, Aaron, be All bold. Right, What's your on. joke? What's, what is it? What rock group has four men that don't sing? Oh, it's not the Beatles. What is it? Mount Rushmore. <laughs> ah! I like it. That's a good one. I've heard it. I heard it, is it, too. Good. It is good. That's a good joke. Good job, Aaron. Christy, I like this. Good job, one. Christy. That's a good one. Great, <laughs> good job. Great job. Good job. That joke ruled. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so good, 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 good. Awesome. All right, guys. So it's, you know, I'm excited. I can't say it enough. It's just, it's awesome. 2020 has been great. I'm so pumped about everything that God's yeah, done it's and is on. continuing to do. Man, if you guys haven't had the opportunity lately, come on out to 201 yeah. Mesquite, 1030 a.m. every Sunday, uh, except one Sunday a month or a year uh, when we make out to the meadows. That's a year from now. Yes, and that's a year from now, so you're good. You're good. Uh, but 201 Mesquite, 1030 a.m., uh, Connect Church of Abilene. We want you guys to know that you are welcome home and that we know that you belong. So, yes. yeah, Pastor Adam always says, remember that you were born on purpose. For a purpose. And like I always say, remember that <laughs> Jesus loves you. And we love you too. All right, we will see you Sunday, 1030 a.m. If you can't join us live, Make sure you join us on Facebook Live. We'll see you then. See you Sunday. See ya. Tune into the radio station at Breckenridge uh, Friday at 7.40 a.m. I'll be on there. Bye!